Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and today I'm going to show you a technique that you can use to create a paper or cut paper effect in a digital art software. And all you need to follow along this video is, well, your favorite digital art software, I will be using Procreate, as well as just a super basic round brush. So the first thing to consider here before starting is which size do you want to use for your canvas. I think this kind of cut paper piece could look really great as a wallpaper, for example, for your phone or your iPad. And if that is what you want to do and you're not sure of the dimensions you need to use, it's super easy. You can just go online and search for the model and the brand of the device you're trying to create the background for and then dimensions. So for example, here I'm going with an iPad Pro 2018. So I would just, for example, Google iPad Pro 2018 12.9 inches dimensions or screen dimensions. You could also just take a screenshot and then use that screenshot as your starting point so that you have the exact size of the screen. This is a technique that I'm showing you today so you could completely customize this piece and just apply the different effects and the different techniques to whatever illustration you want. In my case here, to do the demo, I'm just going to go with some super basic green leaves. So we're going to start, no matter what the illustration is, by setting a background. But if you want to follow along and create pretty much the same illustration as what I will be drawing here, to make it easier for you, I made the color palette I will be using available. It is completely free, so you can go ahead and check the description below. It will be linked there. And it is part of a bundle of freebie, which includes other color palettes, textures, templates, cheat sheets, a bunch of really cool things. So feel free to pause the video if you want to go ahead and download that. And once you're ready, we're going to just, again, set the background. Now to do that, you have a few different options. If you're working with Procreate, it's very easy. Whenever you create a canvas, there's always a background color layer. So you can just set that as your color. Otherwise, if you're working in a different software, just create a new layer, put it at the bottom of your layer list and rename that to background. And then you can just drop your color onto that layer. Now, again, I'm using Procreate, so I'm just going to select this background color layer here. And I'm going to go with some super dark greenish blue. So in the color palette, I think I'm going to pick from this column. Let's go with the middle one right here. Great. So once you have your background, we're going to essentially create some sort of a frame. Now you could have a circle, you could have just a rectangle, you could have an organic shape. I'm going to have two organic shapes, one that is going to be above the leaves and one that is going to be behind the leaves. So for that, I'm just going to use pure white, but again, you could go with really whatever color you want. And I'm going to start by creating one layer for the shape that is going to be above the leaves. And I'm going to rename that layer to frame above. And here we're just going to go with our basic round brush. So if you're working with Procreate, the basic round brush I would recommend using is in the airbrushing pack that comes with the app, the art brush, and make sure the opacity of your brush is at 100%. Now, if you're working with a different software, just go ahead and check the description below. I'm going to give you tips on finding brushes or things you want to look for when finding brushes in your own software. Now, in this video, though, I'm going to, yes, suggest free brushes that come with Procreate, but I'm also going to suggest brushes that come with my inking, stippling, and texture bundle. These brushes are not essential at all, really, not at all. If you want to check them out, they will be linked in the description below, and there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. If you do have that bundle, though, I'm personally going to pick from the inking pack that comes with it, the bonus base round brush. And here again, I'm just going to draw some sort of an organic shape that is going to be above the leaves. So I'm going to go with, let's go with that. And then I'm just going to fill in shape and maybe add some extra little details, like maybe some ovals, just to break it up a little bit. Now I also want to have some white shape behind the leaves, so I want to make it look like there's some depth in the piece. Whoops. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same step, but with a different layer that this time is going to be lower in the list. So if you want to do the same, go ahead and create a new layer, put it below everything you have so far except for the background, and rename that new layer to Frame Below. Otherwise, same thing, you just go ahead and map out the frame shape you want to have. OK, 
Great, now from there we're going to start drawing the elements that we want to have. Later in the video I'm going to show you how to add the shadows, the details, and those textures to start making the piece look more like cut paper. But for now we're really just focusing on trying to figure out the composition and the elements we want to use. Now no matter what you are drawing, at this step it is super important to make sure your different elements are on separate layers so that we can later come back in and add that texture that I just referred to, as well as the shadows very, very easily. If you draw everything on one layer, it's going to be super hard. So how many layers you use is totally up to you. I suggest when you change a color or when you change the type of element, changing layer as well. So for example here, I'm going to start with a layer that is just very long, almost blades of grass, so just very long leaves. And so I'm going to create that layer above, frame below, because I want these leaves to be above that part of the frame, but below frame above because I want them to be under that part of the frame. And here I'm just going to start with a very basic green. I'm not even sure which one I'm going to go with. Probably this one right here in the color palette. Yeah, let's go with that. Otherwise, same brush. We're just going to draw the basic shapes we want to have. So I'm going to go with these super long grass-like leaves. So from there, all we're going to do is we're going to repeat the steps of just creating more layers with more leaves or more whatever you're drawing. Always making sure they are between the frame layers if you have to, like I do. So here I'm going to just create a new layer. I'm not really bothering renaming them because I don't really know the type of leaves that I'm drawing, but if you're drawing an element that is a specific, so for example, if you were to draw a sky and you would have a layer that, which has clouds, you would rename that layer to clouds. And then if you have a layer that is the sun, you would rename that layer to sun. If you know how to rename the layers, it's always good. But here again, I'm just going with very basic shapes. So I'm not going to bother with that too much. Now these other leaves, I'm going to draw them as almost oak tree leaves, not really oak trees, but a little bit more interesting shape than just big and round. And I'm going to make them a little bit darker than these blades of grass that I have. So I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to go with this one right here in the color palette for now, but I might change it later. I'm going to show you how to do that, by the way, if you want to change your colors later down the road. So here I'm just going to go with, let's go with two leaves. I'm just going to quickly say where I want them to be. And I'm going to draw, you know, these very wobbly sides on the leaves. Although I might refine these openings, they're kind of, I want them to be round, not so pointy. So I'm just going to come in with my eraser set to the exact same brush that I'm using as my paintbrush. So the base brown brush from the inking bundle or the hard brush if you're just using free brushes. And I'm just going to tweak the shape a little bit. And I'm going really quickly here because this is a demo, but the base shapes that you're drawing here are pretty much the most important part of the whole piece because from there we're just going to add some basic shadows and textures which are going to help make the piece look more like cut paper but it's not going to completely transform everything in terms of the shapes and the colors and, and stuff like that. So it is worth taking the time here to draw shapes that you like. Again, this is just a demo and I would love this tutorial to not be too long so I'm really trying to keep it super, super simple, kind of quick and dirty, but make sure that at any point, if you need more time, you pause the video and take the time, that time that you need to change the shapes. So once more, I'm just going to keep moving on, keep creating layers and adding different kind of leaves. So just a new layer above the one I just created. And this time I'm going to go with, I guess still pretty long leaves, but a little bit thicker than these ones in the back. And I'm going to go with an in between these two colors. So a little bit paler, but not too pale. So actually I'm gonna pick this one right here in the color palette. And one thing you're noticing here, I'm 
really making sure everything is overlapping a lot that is a key element when you want to have that cut paper texture you want to make sure that some of the elements are overlapping so that when we start adding the shadows that cut paper stack effect starts coming to life and starts making the piece look like what you want it to look And I think I'm going to come in with one more layer of leaves or kind of branches with leaves this time. So just again, a layer above everything so far, except for frame above, which is going to stay at the top. And here I'm going to go with a quite pale green. So I'm just going to pick this one right here at the top of this column. And here I'm just going to go with essentially a little stem. I'm going to have two of these and then on each side of the stem I'm just going to draw a round leaf. And the goal in this video, as I mentioned, is really just to show you the technique. But if you like this style of illustration, make sure to let me know in the comments below and maybe suggest what more precise illustration you would like to do or you would like me to do a tutorial on, I should say. So instead of just showing you the technique, we could actually take the time to sit down and draw a specific illustration with that cut paper style. Now once you do have everything mapped out, again, I went super quick and dirty here. Since everything is on separate layers, it is really easy to move the shapes around if you want to and to change the base colors. So let's say for example, I feel this leaf is not where I want it to be. I'm just gonna go back on the layer on which that leaf is. So in this case, layer five, I'm going to pick a selection tool and just quickly draw a selection around that leaf so that I can then use an error tool or a moving tool like this one in Procreate to move the elements so that it is a little bit more in a place that I want it to be. Same thing if you're trying to change colors, super easy as well because everything is on separate layers. All you could do is just pick a different color. Let's say I want something darker than that. I'm just gonna show you an example. I'm just gonna color pick the color, make it a little bit darker. All you could do in that case is just drop your color onto the shape, and then you get a new color. So feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to work on your base shapes. And then once you're done with that, we're going to meet up in the next chapter, which is going to be all about adding the paper texture, the details, and some gradients, just to make the piece a little bit less flat. Great, so once you have the base shapes, we're going to add a paper texture on top of everything to give it, well, the paper texture effect that we want to have. It's not going to look like cut paper just yet because for that we have to add shadows, but that texture is really going to bring this from looking super digital to actually looking a little bit more like paper. Now there are so many different paper textures online that you can use, but if you don't have one, I have a free one that you can download. It is in the description below with the color palette. So again, feel free to pause the video, go ahead and download that. And all we're going to do here is we're just going to try to import it in our canvas, put it at the top and then use what is called a blending mode. So if you're working in Procreate, the way to import a picture is, or a photo or an image is very easy. You're just going in the wrench icon menu here at the top. And you're going to select, depending on how you save that photo, either insert a photo or insert a file. Now, if you want to head and downloaded my freebies bundle, we're going to select insert a file because that image is saved in a folder and not as an image in our camera roll. And so the paper texture is going to be in a folder called add-ons, at least if you're using my free one. And it's going to be this paper texture folder here. So you can just tap on that and then select whichever one you want. I don't even know which one I'm going to pick. Let's go with this one on the right. And then it's just going to import it in your file. Now from there, we want to make sure that it covers the entire 
canvas. So if you're working in Procreate, you can select fit to canvas here, and then you can just stretch the sides to make it a little bit bigger. And once more, you need to make sure that texture is above everything you have in your file. So just select the layer and put it at the top and rename it to paper texture. Now that's great, we can see the texture now, but we cannot see anything else. So to apply this not just as a solid opaque image, we're going to use what is called a blending mode. And without getting into all the details about blending modes, essentially applying a blending mode to this layer is going to tell the software you're working with to just blend the image with whatever is underneath. Now blending modes are usually with the opacity of your layers, so if you're working in a different software, just try to find the opacity and usually you're going to find the blending modes there as well. In Procreate, to access the blending modes, all you have to do is tap on the little N next to the check mark on your layer, and that's going to open the opacity slider here, as well as this list of bunch of weird names, which are blending modes. So here we're going to try to find something like multiply, which is very common, so you should have it in your software, or linear burn if you cannot find multiply. Now in Procreate, multiply is at the very top of the list, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and pick right here. Now, one thing that might happen when you add a paper texture is your piece might become a little bit darker. I don't think it's too bad in mine. I actually kind of prefer it that dark. But if you feel like yours became too dark, make sure you still have your paper texture layer selected and then try to find any kind of color adjustment filters or tool you have in your software. So in Procreate, we can find those in the adjustment menu here at the top. Usually you're going to find something like hue, saturation and brightness, curves, anything like that that allows you to change how light or how dark a picture, an image or a layer is, is what you're trying to find here. So I'm going to go with hue, saturation and brightness. Again, that's something super common, so you should have that in your software as well. And I'm just going to increase the brightness slider here on the very right a little bit. I don't want to lose a texture. If I increase it too much, I lose a texture. But if I increase it just a little bit, it's going to preserve the texture while still giving me a little bit brighter of an image. So I'm going to here set it to 54%. Now I'm going to share something with you that is a little bit more advanced. So if you're getting lost, don't worry about it. It's not really that important, but if you're a little bit more perfectionist, you may want to try and add this extra step to your piece. So that extra step is creating multiple version of that paper texture and applying those different textures to the different elements and moving them a little bit so it looks less like just a uniform paper and looks more like different pieces of paper. And a texture like this one that I have right here, which looks more like noise, it doesn't really matter, it's really not important. But if you had, for example, more of a watercolor paper that has usually pretty clear horizontal lines, which would look much more like a pattern, this is something you would want to do. So what I mean by that is, right now we just have one paper texture above everything, but to create this effect of breaking up the paper texture into multiple pieces of paper, what you would do is you would duplicate or create a copy of the paper texture you have. So to do that in Procreate, super easy, you just swipe your layer towards the left with one finger and you select duplicate. Now from there, you would hide the top copy and then you would select the bottom copy and you would apply that bottom copy as what is called a clipping mask onto the frame layer first. So to do that super easy again, you would just tap on the layer and select clipping mask from the list. So now you can see the layer is still above a frame above, but there's this little arrow on the left. And essentially now we only see the texture onto that frame above shape, not the rest. So what you would do is just repeat those steps. So just creating a copy of your base texture, duplicating that. This time bringing it above any other layer you have. And applying that as a clipping mask onto that other shape. And then from there you would be able to use an error tool or a moving or resizing tool, whatever you want, to either resize a piece or resize the texture a little bit, I should say, or move it just the tiniest little bit so that if you had that kind of line pattern in your paper texture, it doesn't align anymore. It's a little bit staggered. 
So you would just essentially repeat the step of creating a copy, moving the copy, applying it as a clipping mask, and then changing the size or the position of that layer a little bit for all the different shapes we have. Again, in this case, I'm not even going to bother doing that because the texture I have is just this grainy thing. There's no clear pattern in it. I don't feel the need to break it up more than it is right now. One thing I do want to do though is add some very simple details and extra elements on my base shapes. And to do that, we're going to use a similar technique or we're going to use part of the technique that we just used, which is creating clipping mask. So I'm going to give you an example with this big leaf right here. I like the shape of it, I like the composition, but it is just so boring being this big flat shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer above the layer on which that leaf shape is. And just like I did for the paper texture in the previous step, or the example of the previous step, I'm going to apply this new layer right here as a clipping mask, which means now whatever I draw on this new layer that is a clipping mask is going to stay within the shape of the leaf that I had before. So what I could go here and do is just color pick my leaf color, maybe make it a little bit darker. And so for example, that could allow me to draw one half the leaf and make it darker without having to worry about staying within that base shape that I have. So I'm going to do that kind of darker half on all these leaf shapes and maybe on a few different ones as well, always using the same technique. So again, very quick and dirty. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time, but I'm just going to repeat, as I mentioned, this step on a few different leaves, just to show you again how it could work. So for example, maybe I want to do the same thing, adding a different colored half on these oak type of leaf. So just creating a new layer right above the oak leaf layer, applying it as a clipping mask, then selecting my oak leaf layer, making it a little bit darker and just filling in one half. And I'm also going to do it on these big long leaves, might as well. So same thing, new layer above the one on which I want to apply the new details. Applying that new layer as a clipping mask. Color picking the base color and making it a little bit darker. And then just drawing whatever element you want. In my case, it's going to be a darker half on the leaves. Now you could also use this technique to add extra precise details. It doesn't have to be big chunks of colors. So for example, let's say I want to add some little veins on my oak leaves. I could just either go back on the layer that is applied as a clipping mask or create a new one above, applying it as a clipping mask once more, and then just going in with whatever color I want to use. I'm going to go with a darker version than the darkest I have so far and maybe keeping the same brush or switching to a different brush. I'm gonna switch actually to maybe more of a sketching or drawing brush here. So if you're working with Procreate and want to experiment with that, a free option would be in the sketching pack that comes with the app. If I can tap on it, there you go. Either the HB or 6B pencil, they could work really well. If you have my inking, stippling and texture bundle, you could pick something like the bonus sketching brush or the ultra smooth tracing. Essentially here, I'm just trying to find something that is a little bit less chunky than just a basic round brush. So I'm gonna go with the bonus sketching brush. I'm just going to draw the veins or whatever details you would want to add on your piece without having to worry about staying within the shape.
Might do the same thing on these big oval leaves. So just a new layer above the clipping mask with that dark half, applying that as a clipping mask as well. Picking a darker version of the darkest color I have so far. You know, it doesn't need to be an exact color at all. It's just making sure it's darker or dark enough so that I can see what I'm doing. And here I'm just gonna go with one line in the middle and that's pretty much gonna be it. So once more, feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to work on your details. Otherwise, we're going to move on to one extra step that is totally optional, but can help the piece feel a little bit less, I don't want to say flat because it is cut paper, you know, paper is flat, but let's say just a little bit more interesting. And this step is to add some gradients within the base shapes. And the way to do that, well, there are a few different methods, but the one I'm going to show you here is so, so, so simple. And you have a few different ways to approach it depending on what is available to you in your software. So I'm going to show you an example with these kind of branches here in the front. The first option would be to create a clipping mask like what we did in the previous steps. But I find this file is getting really a little bit too much. There are so many different layers here. So what I'm going to do here instead of creating a clipping a clipping mask is I'm going to activate what is called alpha lock on that layer and alpha lock behaves very similarly to a, a clipping mask meaning it's going to allow you to draw within one shape without having to worry about getting outside of it but it is on one layer so you don't need to create extra layer it is all on the same layer now the way to activate alpha lock in procreate super easy you just take two fingers and swipe your layer towards the right or you can just tap on a layer and find alpha lock in the menu here now, alpha lock is super common as well, so you should be able to find it in your software. But if you can't find it, you can just, again, use the clipping mask technique. So creating a new layer above this one, applying it as a clipping mask, and then going from there. Now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to select a slightly different version of that base color, whatever it is. Here, I'm going to go with, in the color palette, probably this really pale green right here. And we are going to pick this time a super soft brush. So that could mean something like in the airbrushing pack that comes with Procreate, the soft brush. Essentially, we still want something that is pretty opaque and doesn't have texture to it, but we want to have some of that feathering outside the brush so it's not just a hard circle. If you are working with my inking, stippling, and texture bundle, we're going to go in the texture part of that bundle and we're going to pick the big soft layer builder. And here you're going to make that brush pretty big honestly the exact size doesn't matter but you want to make it big enough so that it can cover a big area and you're just going to brush that color on one part of your element to create a gradient within it so i'm going to brush it on the top just like that now you could repeat this step however many times you want add gradients in the other pieces but again this is a quick and dirty tutorial so I'm just going to move on but feel free to pause the video if you want to add gradients in all your other shapes. Now once you're happy with your base shapes, once you added the paper texture, the details and some gradients, we're just going to clean up our file a little bit and then we're going to finish up by adding shadows which are going to be essentially what creates the cut paper effect. So what I mean by cleaning up our file is if you're like me, by now you should have way too many layers and it's just not super nice to work in a file like that, or at least I'm not enjoying it. So we're going to remedy that by merging any element that is the same element, but that is split on separate layers. So for example, here, my long oval leaves, I have the base shape, then the darker half and then the details. So instead of having those be on three layers, I'm just going to merge them all together. So I have just one layer for these kind of leaves. Now, if you want to merge layers and procreate super easy, all you're going to do is you're going to take two fingers and you're going to physically squish the layers together. So I'm going to do the same thing on my oak leaf kind of layers. So I have the base shape, the darker half and the details. I'm going to merge all of those three together. And then here, same thing again with my long grassy leaves, just merging these two layers right here. 
One other thing to note as well before we start adding the shadows, if you created or used alpha lock in any of your layers, like for me on this one right here, we're just going to deactivate it. So either again swiping the layers towards the right to deactivate it or deactivating it from the menu right here. There shouldn't be at this point any check mark next to alpha lock. And then from there we're going to add the shadows which is going to be super super easy but we're going to do it in a few steps to make sure that the shadows behave similarly between the different layers so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a copy of all the layers we have and we're going to change the color of these copies so i'm going to do an example with this first top layer right here so i'm just going to duplicate that layer swiping it towards the left with one finger and picking duplicate and for now, I'm going to hide the top copy and I'm going to select the bottom copy. Now your shadows can be whatever color you want. Here, I'm gonna go with kind of this grayish blue right here. And we are just going to fill in that entire shape with our blue or whatever shadow color we're using. And to do that, it's super easy. All you're going to do is you're going to take your shadow color you're going to drop onto the shape to recolor it. And if you're working with Procreate, you're probably gonna to need to adjust the threshold, which is incredibly easy. You just keep your pencil on the screen when you're starting to fill in the shape and you move it towards the right to increase the area that you're filling in or towards the left if you filled in too much. So in my case, I'm gonna go with 100% and that's it. So we're going to start by just repeating this step with all the different layers we have, which for now is not going to make a difference because if I go ahead and reactivate the top, we don't see the bottom, obviously. But for now, we're just going to start doing that and then I'm going to show you how to turn those into shadows. So again, we're just going to duplicate the next layer, which in my case is the one with the big oval leaves. So creating a copy of that, hiding the top copy, selecting the bottom copy and just dropping the shadow color onto the shapes, making sure we fill in everything. Now, if you have textures and gradients and effects in it, you're going to see that they get recolored as well if you're working with Procreate. Honestly, it doesn't matter as long as you have the basic color. In my case, this kind of dusty blue, that's, that's okay. It's okay if it's not the exact same color everywhere. So moving on to the next shape, the oak leaves, just duplicating the layer, hiding the top copy, selecting the bottom copy, and filling in the shape with the color. And once more for this bottom shape here, the blades of grass or something like that, hiding the top copy, and filling in the bottom copy with the dusty blue or whatever other shadow color you're using. So once you have that, what we're going to do is we're going to slightly move these shadow layers all towards one direction. So we're going to select all the layers and the way to do that in Procreate is just swiping them towards the right with one finger. So in my case, I had these four shadow layers and then you're going to use an arrow tool or a move tool. In this case, the arrow tool is going to be one I pick here in Procreate. And you're just going to move, physically move those shadows towards whatever direction you want. So I'm going to move them towards the lower left of my piece. Not too big of a move, just a little bit, but something like that. Now the thing is, it doesn't look like shadows at all right now. It just looks like this weird blue thickness to the pieces. So what we're going to do to create the shadow effect is we're going to use a blending mode, just like we did for the paper texture. So we're going to select all, or we're going to go through all the different shadow layers we have, and we're going to apply the same blending mode that we use for the paper texture. So that means either multiply or linear burn. I'm gonna go with multiply here at the top of the list. And as you can see now, it's starting to look much more like shadows. So just repeating that on all the different shadow layers we have. Just like that. Now you could keep the shadows like that if you wanted to. I feel like to make it look like cut paper, it is really nice to soften the shadows. Right now they're way too crisp for my liking. And so to do that super easy, you're just going to apply a blur to the different shadow layers you have. So Procreate to apply a blur, you just go in the adjustment panel here at the top. And you're going to pick from this blur section here in the middle. In most software, you're gonna find something called Gaussian Blur, but if you cannot find Gaussian Blur, just go with any kind of blur you have. Honestly, it doesn't matter. But in Procreate, there is Gaussian Blur, so I'm gonna go with that. 
and then you're going to swipe your finger towards the right to add some blur or towards the left to reduce the blur. So the idea here is not to have too much blur. You don't want it to completely disappear like that, but you want to soften the edge. So just use your judgment here. It's really a question of personal preference. I'm going to go with, let's go with eight. That being said though, I said it's a question of personal preference. Make sure you go with the same amount for the different shadow layers. So in my case, I'm going to remember I have eight. And then we're just going to repeat those steps on the different shadow layers. So let's go here. Now, if you feel like some of your shadows are too intense, you can either lower the opacity of that shadow layer altogether or if you feel like it's just a section that is too intense, like I feel like the blue is way too strong on the, the white part, you can just come in with a soft eraser. So the same soft brush you would have used to add gradients on the pieces, but with the eraser instead. So in Procreate either from the airbrushing pack, the soft brush, or if you have my bundle in the texture and grit pack, the big soft layer builder. And then with that, you can just gently erase part of those shadows that you find are overwhelming. Just making it all a little bit softer on top of the white. Now, speaking of the white, the white should be casting a shadow as well, but I wanted to keep it separate just to show you a different method you could use to add the shadows. I find that method of just duplicating the shape, creating a shadow with that to be quite fast, but it is not necessarily the most um, how can I say? It doesn't necessarily yield the best results because the shadows would behave differently based on how far the elements are from each other and stuff like that. So again, quick and dirty tutorial, this method of creating the shadows by just replicating the shapes work great, but if you want to spend a little bit more time on creating that shadow effect and that cut paper effect, what you could do is manually draw the shadows. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw the shadow for this cut part here, the, the white frame, by using the manual technique. So it's, it's very similar in the sense that we're going to draw with the same color and we're going to apply blending modes, but instead of creating a copy of whatever layer, I'm just going to create a new layer underneath. And then with a soft brush, I'm manually going to draw those shadows. So I was using, again, the big soft layer builder or the soft brush. And I'm just going to come in and manually draw those shadows. So they're not going to look quite as perfectly straight in a weird way, you know, not in a good perfectly straight way as the ones that we created by duplicating the layer. Now, I personally like to combine both effects, meaning when I have more complex shapes like these, I just create a copy of the layer and use that duplicating uh, technique that we used before. But then I refine some of the elements by manually drawing in some extra shadows, like for this front section right here. So once you have it drawn, otherwise it's going to be the same thing as we did before, which is going to apply a blending mode on that layer. And since we used a soft brush, we don't need to add an extra gradient. It already looks like, you know, it's a soft gradient. So I'm going to do the same thing here for this back section using the hand drawing method technique, just to show you once more how you could approach that. So you would just create a new layer under the layer that you want to be casting a shadow. So in my case, a new layer under the frame below layer. Then with your base shadow color in a soft brush, you would just draw the shadow you want to have. Making sure you are drawing it in the same direction as the ones that you had uh, moved if you used the previous technique as well. And then applying a blending mode such as multiply or linear burn to create the actual shadow effect. If you want to learn more cool digital art, especially Procreate techniques, tips and tricks, all of those, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more tutorials for you. 
But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.